The season kicks off with possibly the deadliest first three minutes of any American Horror Story season. The year is 1970 and three happy campers are about to hook up, but one of them keeps hearing a jingling noise. Next, she begins to remove her sweater, but while the sweater covers her eyes, turns out her pals got a knife through their kiss. Nine people were killed here, but more on that later. Next, it's 1984, and after the synth remix of a normal American Horror Story title sequence, we meet Xavier, Montana, Ray, Chet, and Brooke, who all coordinate an entire plan to all drop everything and go be counselors at a camp that they've never even heard of. Well, all except for Brooke, who would rather not abandon every responsibility she has in order to go on a retreat with her aerobics classmates who barely know each other. After making a great decision, Brooke goes home and gets attacked by the Night Stalker, or real life serial killer Richard Ramirez. He tells her that, although he missed many chances to kill her that night, he plans on sealing the deal on another day. By the way, Brooke did manage to do a number on the Night Stalker with a frying pan. So, with a serial killer on her tail, Brooke decides to hide out with the aerobics gang alone in the woods for a few weeks. They stop for gas, and the attendant, Ed, does a great impression of the crazy guy from Friday the 13th. Also, Xavier calls someone from the payphone who turns out to be a very creepy, ghostface-like man who tells Xavier that he can't hide and he knows where he's going. Then I Know What You Did Last Summer happens as they hit a hiker with their super cool van. The aerobics besties get to camp and meet Margaret, Rita, and Bertie. Rita, the camp nurse, fixes the hiker who nobody admits that they hit with their car. Next, they all gather around the campfire, and instead of singing their campfire song, Nurse Rita decides to tell them all about the murders from 1970, also known as the opening scene of this episode. She tells them about Mr. Jingles, also known as Benjamin Richter, who learned to kill in the war, and loved it so much that he wanted to kill again. Margaret decides to show the rest of the gang her lack of an ear while correcting Rita about the body count of the murders. Turns out, Margaret was a victim of the 1970 Camp Redwood murders, however, her story about Bubbles and Jesus is suspicious, to say the least. Uh-oh, Mr. Jingles escaped from the asylum. Some detectives find a newspaper that suggests that Mr. Jingles is now after Margaret. On his way to Camp Redwood, Mr. Jingles stops at the gas station, just like our aerobics pals. But Mr. Jingles isn't here for gas, he's here for murder. Now Mr. Jingles is at Camp Redwood and he kills the hiker, and once again, Brooke evades murder. She tells the gang that the crazy ear guy is here, but after not finding the hiker's body, they all decide that Brooke is just insane. Next, the payphone rings, which is weird because we've already established that the phone lines were down. Eager to be murdered, Brooke investigates alone in the middle of the night. She discovers that nobody is on the line except maybe some jingling keys and grunting. But then, Richard Ramirez walks out of the woods because maybe Brooke really is crazy. But the episode begins with Karen warning Margaret about Mr. Jingle's escape, to which Margaret responds with grabbing her gun and scaring Karen away. As Karen leaves the camp, she gets roadside assistance from Mr. Jingles, who then proceeds to kill her. Then, Brooke is the only one who hears about Ed's murder on the news, so once again, everyone thinks she's just paranoid. Later, Brooke reveals to Montana that her ex-fiancé shot up their own wedding in a gruesome and bloody sequence set to White Wedding. Since it is nighttime, the boys all take showers, but Xavier has back to the cabin for his beach towel. On the way, Margaret turns out the lights and Xavier gets grabbed by Blake, his sugar daddy who is now threatening to release a porn that Xavier did unless Xavier agrees to make more. Xavier bargains with Blake and says he has someone that can replace him, and then takes Blake to the showers to look at Trevor. While Blake peeps, Xavier makes a run for it, and then Blake gets a spear through the eye. Meanwhile, Richard Ramirez is really also here at Camp Redwood and finds Brooke at the dock. She beats him with a paddle and manages to get away when Ramirez is distracted by, surprise, the hiker that Brooke just saw dead on the door in the last episode. Richard guts the poor guy and moves on, until later he finds the hiker again, and to his shock, he's still not dead. So Richard kills him again and finds his ID, which is dated 1970. 
70, then all of the sudden, the hiker is gone again. Richard Ramirez breaks into Margaret's cabin, and the pair have some tea and discuss Richard's troubling childhood. Then, Margaret herself runs into the hiker, and is weirdly very much not at all phased by the ghost in the time loop. Then, the gang is all made aware that Blake is dead, and there really are some killers at the camp. So, they try to escape in the van, but crash into Margaret's car after Nurse Rita jumps in front of the van. Rita, who had been attacked by Mr. Jingles, has a wound on her chest, but is still living, and she tells the gang that she has a car, but she needs to go get her keys from the infirmary. Trevor also has a motorcycle, but needs his keys as well, so the group splits up and they all get spooked when they both have unknown threats banging at each door. Firstly, Richard Ramirez nearly kills Ray, but Chet saves him, and Ray, Chet, Brooke, and Rita are all able to escape. Then, two Mr. Jingles impersonators throw some flaming feces through the window of the cabin that Trevor, Montana, and Xavier are hiding in. Then, Jingles kills his two fans, and the gang is able to escape. Chet and Ray fall into a pit of spikes, then Jingles spares a Jingles impersonator who is probably legally blind, given that he has no clue that he's not talking to a rubber mask. Next, Rita sedates Brooke after Brooke suggests leaving to get the police. Flashback to one week ago, Donna Chambers, the character formerly known as Nurse Rita, meets with Mr. Jingles at the asylum. He tells her that he doesn't remember killing the kids in 1970. Rita then tells Jingles that she needs to study him in his natural habitat, so she convinces him to escape using her plan. Another flashback where Donna stalks the real Nurse Rita and eventually overpowers her and takes on Nurse Rita's identity. Then, back at Camp Redwood, Donna drags Brooke's unconscious body off screen. Back at the pit, Ray reveals to an unconscious Chet that a fraternity pledge died under his watch during Hell Week, and that when he tried disposing the body, turns out Guy wasn't dead, but Ray was unable to stop the car and the car went off a cliff, thus making Ray responsible for the death of that pledge. Three days prior to Ray leaving for Camp Redwood, Ray hears that the police have found the car that the pledge was in, thus prompting Ray to go to Camp Redwood. Then, Ray climbs out of the pit, leaving Chet alone with a spear through his chest. Montana, Xavier, and Trevor find the real Nurse Rita, who is immediately killed by Mr. Jingles, but she's not a total waste because the gang sees that she's wearing a uniform that implies that she's the actual Nurse Rita. Then Ray finds Montana, Xavier, and Trevor, but lies to them about where he's been and doesn't mention that Chet is dying. Ray and Montana go to try and get help via Trevor's motorcycle and Xavier and Trevor find Chet, who tells him that Ray left him to die. Then they save Chet and get him out of the pit, and Trevor mistakenly throws a Mr. Jingles impersonator into the pit to die. Richard Ramirez finds Ray in Montana, and Ray leaves on the motorcycle, abandoning Montana. Then karma comes, in the form of Mr. Jingles decapitating Ray before he can leave the premises of Camp Redwood. Now back to Montana and Richard Ramirez, who are making out, but once that's finished, Montana asks Richard Ramirez why the hell he hasn't killed Brooke yet. Episode 4 kicks off with a flashback to Montana leading a midnight aerobics class. Richard Ramirez stops by and kills an aerobics student who was rude to Montana. Montana is into this and asks if he is willing to kill for her again. She then reveals that the groomsman who was killed at Brooke's wedding, that Brooke was accused of sleeping with, is actually Montana's brother, and Montana believes Brooke is responsible for his death. While tending to Chet's wounds, Trevor and Xavier realize that Blake's car is a way out of the camp so they split up to find Margaret and Bertie. Margaret finds the two dead Mr. Jingles impersonators, and Trevor tells Margaret that the real Mr. Jingles killed them. Margaret refuses to go to the car with Trevor because she has a gun and believes that she can protect herself. Xavier finds Bertie, who doesn't believe Xavier about Mr. Jingles being back, until Jingles steps foot into the mess hall himself. Xavier hides under the table, and Bertie bonds with Jingles until Xavier makes his presence known, which causes Jingles to stab Bertie repeatedly and lock Xavier in an oven set to broil. Brooke awakens in a shed after being sedated by Donna. She breaks out, but then activates a booby trap, causing her to be stuck in a net. Donna finds Brooke and reveals that she set the traps, and she reveals to Brooke that she is behind Mr. Jingles' escape and his return to Camp Redwood. Donna then leaves Brooke to be killed by Mr. Jingles. Then, clinging to life, Bertie frees a severely burned Xavier from the oven. Bertie asks Xavier to finish her off and put her out of her misery, which Xavier reluctantly and painfully does. Montana finds Brooke and tells her that she'll go get help, and meanwhile, Margaret has a flashback to the summer of 1970 where Benjamin carves her a wooden bear, 
revealing a romantic past between the two characters. Benjamin promises that he'd do anything to protect Margaret. Back in 1984, Montana tells Richard where Brooke is, so he goes there, but he is then confronted by Mr. Jingles. So, the Night Stalker and Mr. Jingles duel, which ends in Richard Ramirez's head being impaled on a tree. At the same time, Richard Ramirez's stand Montana confronts Mr. Jingles' stand Donna, which ends with Montana slashing Donna with a branch and getting away. Mr. Jingles then heads to Margaret's cabin, and he tells her that he's there to finish what he started, to which Margaret responds with revealing that she committed the Camp Redwood murders in 1970 and let Benjamin take the fall. Flashback to 1970 and Benjamin is beaten, electrocuted, and made to believe that he is guilty and detached from reality. Another flashback to just before the murders reveals that Margaret's fellow campers made fun of her, which sparked her to kill them all and cut off all of their ears, including her own. Back in 1984, an angry and confused Mr. Jingles tries to kill Margaret for what she did to him, but Margaret shoots him three times in the chest. Chet, Montana, and Trevor hear the gunshots, and Trevor goes to check on Margaret. Trevor sees that Margaret has seemingly killed Jingles, and Margaret then stabs Trevor and removes his ear. Xavier stumbles upon a living Mr. Jingles who tells Xavier that it was never him who killed the campers. But suddenly, Brooke finds Xavier and Mr. Jingles vanishes, and they then hear an explosion and find Margaret, Chet, and Montana by Blake's burning car, leaving them with no escape once again. Margaret tells the survivors, Chet, Brooke, Montana, and Xavier, that Jingles attacked her and killed Trevor. Meanwhile, Donna awakens on the ground of the forest and sees Richard Ramirez levitating and his wounds healing while his eyes turn black and he seemingly regains life. <laughs> Flashback to 1980, where Donna Chambers walks in on a corpse that was mutilated by her father. Her father insinuates that he's been murdering people his entire life, but Donna tells him that he was not born that way and that she can help him. Donna's father then stabs himself in the neck, killing himself. Then, back at the never-ending night at Camp Redwood, Richard Ramirez says he was reborn and resurrected after being killed by Jingles. Richard also tells Donna that Satan showed him the night of her father's death, and he tells her that she is no different than her father. He says that she is responsible for the 1984 Camp Redwood murders. Then Richard summons a ghost, or at least a physical embodiment of Donna's father, who advises Donna to follow in his footsteps. Xavier tries to start a forest fire, but Margaret knocks him out before he can do that. Margaret tells Chet, Brooke, and Montana that she saw two people camping across the lake and that taking a boat across would be their best bet at survival. Montana volunteers Chet as the first boat ride recipient. Then Montana tries to attack Brooke, but Brooke sees Ray walking outside the window before Montana is able to attempt murder. Brooke goes to find Ray, who has little memory of what he's doing and what he has done, and in the middle of the lake, Margaret gives a church sermon to Chet before telling him that she never saw any campers across the lake and that that was just an excuse to get everyone alone with her. Margaret then kills Chet by chaining him to an anchor and drowning him in the lake. Brooke and Ray hide out in the mess hall and they end up hooking up and Brooke confesses that it was her first time. Xavier wakes up and Donna enters the cabin. Donna tells Xavier that she released Jingles, prompting Xavier to attack and chase Donna. Brooke finds Ray's decapitated head in the fridge, which informs both Brooke and Ray that Ray is in fact a ghost. Brooke runs off and tells Montana that Ray is a ghost and Montana strikes Brooke on the head. And now it's 20 minutes till sunrise and Montana reveals her villain vendetta to Brooke. Brooke overpowers Montana and gets away. Meanwhile, Mr. Jingles tells Donna that she shouldn't have brought him here, and Donna says that she was just trying to figure out if her father was always a killer. Jingle tells Donna that Margaret committed the 1970 murders and framed him. Donna tries to get Jingles to kill her, but Jingles says he will only kill one more person and it will not be Donna. Jingles tries to kill Margaret, but Xavier flexes his Robin Hood skills and shoots Jingles with five bows. Margaret kills Xavier, removes his ear, and then Mr. Jingles wakes up to find Richard Ramirez, who asks Jingles if he accepts Satan as his master, and Jingles nods in affirmation. The sun rises, marking the end of the longest single night in American Horror Story history, spanning five total episodes, and the school bus of kids arrive while Brooke and Montana are still brawling. Brooke repeatedly stabs Montana, killing her as the entire school bus of kids watches. The cops arrive and Brooke gets put into handcuffs as Margaret tells the sheriff that Brooke went crazy and killed everyone. The paramedics find Ray and put him in an ambulance. However, as the ambulance exits the grounds of Camp Redwood, Ray is unable to follow. Montana recognizes that she's now a ghost and she kills the sheriff before finding Ray and Jonah, and Montana tells them that they all can be gods in this Camp Redwood purgatory. Then, Satan pals Richard Ramirez and Mr. Jingles are are able to exit Redwood in a stolen police car and they make it to Los Angeles. All right. 
It's 1985, and Richard Ramirez and Mr. Jingles are sharing a motel room in Los Angeles. Mr. Jingles expresses that he's tired of putting up with Ramirez's lifestyle, and he's tired of seeing people die. But Richard says that there's no going back after Satan gifted him life. While stopped at a liquor store, Benjamin sees a newspaper with Richard's face on it, identifying him as the Night Stalker. He hands the newspaper to a woman and indicates that Ramirez is in the store. A mob chases Richard Ramirez and beats him as Benji drives off. Time jump to 1989 at a now-abandoned Camp Redwood, where Montana kills a wandering duck photographer with Xavier's support, while the ghosts of the 1970 victims observe. Cut to an episode of The Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, starring the real estate mogul Margaret Booth, who has made a career of buying properties with dark pasts, like John Wayne Gacy's home, the Winchester House, Spawn's Ranch, and Briarcliff Manor. And, surprise, beside Margaret Booth is Trevor Kirchner, who reveals that the knife missed his heart and he miraculously recovered and married Margaret. Flashback to 1985, when Trevor wakes up from his coma, where he and Margaret make a deal to get married and share Margaret's riches in exchange for Trevor not turning her into the police. Back at the Booth mansion in 1989, and we meet Margaret's assistant, Courtney, who tells the happy couple that Brooke Thompson has lost her final appeal and is set to be executed. Meanwhile, the ghosts of Camp Redwood rummage through the photographer's belongings, and Ray expresses his frustration with Montana and Xavier's killing habit. The photographer's girlfriend shows up, and Xavier kills her to Ray's dismay. Also on death row, Richard Ramirez astral projects to Brooke's cell, and offers her a similar deal with Satan that Mr. Jingles took. Brooke politely declines. Margaret finds out about the photographer and his girlfriend's murder at Camp Redwood, which inspires her to plan a food and music festival on the camp grounds, in order to capitalize off, or in her words, baptize, the campsite just in time for Halloween 1989. Now, Benjamin Richter finds himself leading a new life in Alaska with a wife and a child. He is employed at a video rental shop and goes by the name Donald. Margaret returns to Camp Redwood and holds a press conference for the festival, and Chet plots to kill Margaret as revenge for his brutal death. A visitor informs Richard Ramirez of the Camp Redwood festival with Billy Idol as a headliner, and Richard says that he doesn't want to die with the 1980s, as 1990 is fast approaching. Richard plots a comeback so that his legend lives for multiple decades. As Brooke walks to her death, Richard gives her another chance to take his offer, which she declines again. About to be executed, Brooke speaks through the one-way mirror, assuming Margaret is on the other side, and pleads her innocence once more. Meanwhile, Richard channels Satan and possesses the prison guard, who is assumed to have allowed for Richard to escape the prison. Back in Alaska, Benjamin finds his wife slain in a note on the back of the Camp Redwood Festival flyer, from Richard saying Satan will have his vengeance. Benjamin leaves his son on his sister-in-law's doorstep and vows to end the darkness that plagues him. Brooke's death sentence seems to be carried out until she is awakened, and the executioner is revealed to be none other than Donna Chambers. It's 1948 at Camp Golden Star, and we meet Bobby and Lavinia Richter, the brother and mother of none other than Mr. Jingles himself, Benjamin Richter. Lavinia scolds Benjamin for reading comic books and being introverted, and Bobby wants to go swimming, so Lavinia tells Benjamin to not let Bobby out of his sight, and the two head off. After being made fun of by a couple of girls, Benjamin decides that he and Bobby are not going to go swimming. Then Benjamin sees the lifeguard walk off into the woods with a girl, and he follows, leaving Bobby alone on the dock. Benjamin watches as the girl and the lifeguard do the deed, while Bobby ignores his brother's directions and swims in the lake. Benjamin returns to the dock to find Bobby in the water as someone starts a motorboat, unaware of the child in the lake. Bobby is struck by the propeller and dies. Lavinia hysterically tells everyone, including Benjamin, that they are responsible for Bobby's death. Now, back in 1989, Donna lays a recently revived Brooke on a motel bed and tells her that she swapped the drug that was supposed to execute her. Donna tells Brooke that she got her a new name and a new passport, but Brooke questions Donna's motives, and Donna tells her that she's trying to make things right. Brooke finds out about the Camp Redwood Festival and vows to return to Redwood to get her revenge on Margaret. To give Brooke a sense of what she missed while locked up, Donna takes her to a roller rink where they meet Bruce, who asks the girls if they can give him a ride to his girlfriend's house. Donna declines, but after he helps them with their broken down car, they agree to give him a ride. When Bruce tells the girls a creepy story, Brooke decides that his ride is over and Donna pulls over. Bruce refuses to leave and a cop pulls up behind them on the side of the road. Donna tells the cop that they don't know Bruce and the cop informs them about the slew of girls that have gone missing in the area. Bruce shoots the cop and exits the car as Brooke and Donna drive away. 
Benjamin makes his return to Camp Redwood and finds one of the Mr. Jingles impersonators that was killed during the 1984 massacre, and the other two impersonators attack Benjamin for killing them. Before they can kill him though, the first impersonator stops them because Montana has ordered that there be no killing until the festival begins. The three Jingles bring Benjamin to the rest of the Redwood Ghosts, and Xavier and Montana tell him their plan to kill everyone who comes to the camp for the festival. Chet tells Benjamin about the Lady in White, the mysterious ghoul that has been terrorizing the ghosts since their death. Benjamin tells the gang that the Lady in White is his mother. Benjamin also tells him that there was a massacre at the camp even before 1970. In 1948, after Bobby's death, Lavinia slaughtered the Golden Star counselors while they slept. Lavinia also tried to kill Benjamin, but he ended up turning the blade onto her and killed her. Xavier takes Benjamin to Lavinia's shack, and Lavinia tells him that she's never been able to find Bobby's ghost, and that she's been trapped at the camp since her death. Lavinia then reveals that in 1970, she influenced Margaret to slaughter the counselors in the bunkhouse. She says that she used Margaret because she was the only thing that Benjamin cared about, and she wanted to destroy him because she believes that the wrong son died that day in 1948. Benjamin tells his mother about his son and his quest to get revenge on Richard Ramirez, Lavinia tells him that his son is better off dead than having to have Benjamin as his father. Donna and Brooke are stopped at a traffic light when Bruce slams into the back of their car with the stolen police car, knocking the girls unconscious. When Brooke wakes up, she's in the driver's seat of a truck, and Bruce tells her that she either has to drag Donna to her death or get shot in the head. Brooke slams the gas and puts the truck in reverse, causing Bruce to fly into the dashboard. Brooke is able to grab his gun and shoot him in the leg. Meanwhile, Margaret, Trevor, and Courtney arrive at Camp Redwood in preparation for the festival, and Trevor finds Montana's ghost. Brooke and Donna tie Bruce to a telephone pole and sever his thumbs, and Donna agrees to come along with Brooke to Camp Redwood. The band Kajagugu arrive at the campgrounds, but so does Richard Ramirez, who kills the entire band. Lavinia confronts Benjamin at the dock, and Benji tells her that he named his son after Bobby. Finally softening up towards her son, Lavinia tells him that his best chance at defeating Ramirez would be to die at his own hands and be bound to the camp forever. Benjamin stabs himself on the dock, dies, and his ghost heads back to the camp, knife in hand. On October 30th, 1989, Donna and Brooke discuss Final Girls at a diner until Stacy Phillips, a writer for the National Enquirer, approaches them to tell Brooke that she looks just like the convicted and dead serial killer Brooke Thompson. Brooke and Donna head back to their motel, but Brooke is concerned that Stacy really recognized her. Meanwhile, Jonas wanders around the outskirts of Camp Redwood when he is picked up by Bruce, who is driving a hot pink car. Jonas hears screaming from the trunk, and it is revealed that a Mary Kay saleswoman tried to help Bruce after Donna and Brooke severed his thumbs and tied him up, but Bruce instead attacked her, locked her in the trunk, and stole her car. After she pleads with Bruce once more, Bruce stabs and kills the woman, and Jonas disappears. Margaret discovers the death of Kajagugu and instructs Courtney to cut the bodies into small pieces and dispose of the band, which he reluctantly does. Benjamin confronts Richard Ramirez, and the two brawl until Bruce hits Benjamin with the car. Benji gets away, and Bruce recognizes Ramirez, and the two team up. Back at the motel, Stacy comes to Brooke and Donna's room and tells them that she knows who they both are, and she knows that Donna was Brooke's executioner. Brooke tells Stacy everything, including the fact that Margaret committed both the 1970 and the 1984 massacres, in hopes that Stacy will keep quiet until Brooke can get revenge on Margaret. Trevor and Montana lie in a bed, and Trevor says that he can stay with her at Camp Redwood to keep her company. Xavier takes Bruce and Ramirez to Benjamin's corpse, revealing his death to Ramirez. Benjamin's ghost stabs Xavier's ghost for some reason, and Ramirez says he's going to go to Alaska to kill Bobby. And since Benji is bound to the camp, he can't do anything about it. Benjamin tries to kill Richard, but Margaret shoots Benji in the head, and she recruits Bruce and Ramirez to kill every headliner at the festival. Ramirez agrees, as long as they don't kill Billy Idol. Brooke and Donna give Stacy a tour of the camp, and they tell her where everything happened, but Stacy is skeptical of their stories. Margaret sees Brooke and Donna from a distance, keying her in on their revenge plot. Montana, Xavier, Chet, Ray, and the three jingles tie Benjamin from a tree and tell him that he can't kill Richard Ramirez because they don't want to deal with his ghost being trapped at Redwood with them. Benjamin pleads to them that Ramirez will kill his son, but Montana says Ramirez doesn't kill kids. But Benji tells her that after Ramirez left Redwood in 84, he killed men, women, and children. He also says that Montana ignited his fire for brutality. Brooke tries to kill Stacy, but Donna stops her, and Stacy runs off. Donna says she won't let Brooke kill an innocent person and that they're here to kill Margaret and Margaret only. Stacy stops stumbles upon Richard Ramirez, Bruce, and Margaret, and the boys kill Stacy. Trevor finds Montana and tells her that he'll kill himself so that he can stay with Montana without growing old. Montana says he's too good for her and she won't let him do that. 
She tells him that she never wants to see him again. Xavier and the Jingles impersonators stab and torture Benjamin on the dock and leave him to bleed out on a boat in the middle of the lake. Benjamin apologizes to Bobby once more and is dragged into the lake by a deformed swamp creature a la Friday the 13th. Benjamin wakes up to find Lavinia and his brother Bobby having a picnic. Lavinia comforts Benji for not being able to save his son, saying that nothing can rise above the darkness of Camp Redwood. Lavinia says that she's eternally grateful that Benji brought Bobby back to her, and she tells him that they can be a family at peace again if he stays with them. And Benji goes off to play with Bobby. The year is 2019, and grown-up Bobby Richter hikes to Camp Redwood in search of his father, who he believes has been sending him money over the years. The camp appears to be abandoned since the 1989 festival. He meets Montana and Trevor, who tell him that his dad is dead. Flashback to 1989, where Trevor blocks the roads to Camp Redwood and tells visitors and performers that the festival is cancelled. Margaret shoots and kills Courtney for telling Trevor that Kaja Gugu was murdered, and Trevor tells Margaret that he's divorcing her, and then Margaret shoots Trevor three times. Dying right outside of campgrounds, Trevor desperately tries to crawl through the entrance. Brooke helps carry Trevor through the entrance, and Trevor dies at Camp Redwood. Trevor's ghost kills Bruce and throws him over the fence so he won't be tied to the camp. The ghosts gang up on Richard Ramirez and try to kill him, but Satan brings him back every time. They establish a kill-watch system so that they can keep killing Ramirez at every revival. Back in 2019, Trevor and Montana tell Bobby that the reason they keep killing Ramirez is to protect Bobby. Chef Birdie and Chet are on Ramirez's death watch, and Birdie flirts with Chet. The two make out and are distracted when Ramirez regains life, and he gets away. He finds Bobby, Trevor, and Montana. Trevor gets stabbed repeatedly, while Bobby and Montana run into the woods. Bobby runs into Ray, and Chet, Birdie, and Montana overpower Ramirez while Bobby runs off. Richard Ramirez throws a knife in Bobby's back, and the two fight. Then the ghosts catch up and fend off Ramirez while Bobby escapes. Montana tells Bobby to go to Red Meadows Asylum and find the medical director. After being apprehended by security at Red Meadows Asylum, Bobby finds Donna, the medical director. Donna tells Bobby that his father is innocent and that Margaret was behind both massacres. Donna tells Bobby about the night of Halloween 1989, where the ghosts pull up to Margaret's cabin. Donna attacks Margaret, Brooke pushes her into a mirror, and Margaret shoots Brooke. Trevor chops off Margaret's arms and shoots them over the property line using a wood chipper. They chop off her legs, head, and throw all of her remains off of the campsite using the wood chipper. Back in 2019, Donna says that she was the sole survivor of the night. Bobby tells Donna about the money, and they travel to Pineville, Oregon to trace back the sender. They find a middle-aged Brooke Thompson who apologizes for not telling Donna that she survived. Brooke says that the thought of Redwood was too overwhelming and she needed to forget Redwood in order to move on. Flashback to 1989, where Ray takes Brooke to die off the Camp Redwood property lines. But someone from inside the camp called an ambulance and Brooke survives. Back to 2019, where Bobby returns to Camp Redwood again and finds Margaret's ghost, who says she can take him to his father. Margaret says she died before she got put into the wood chipper, and she's been hiding ever since. Margaret tries to kill Bobby, but Benjamin appears and stops her. Benjamin stabs her and then takes Bobby to leave before she comes back. Margaret stabs Benjamin and begins to chase Bobby. Lavinia appears and tells Margaret that Bobby deserves a happy ending. Lavinia then stabs Margaret and Bobby escapes the campsite and looks back at the ghosts of his father, grandmother, and uncle looking back at him. The end. <laughs>